Well, with 2018 wrapped up, and I've seen a lot of movies this year, um, and I still need to see some, but out of the bad movies this year, I feel like I've seen enough to give my top 10 worst movies of 2018. Now, surprisingly, bad movies like uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and Gotti are not gonna be on here. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I thought, was one of the dumbest screenplays of the year, but, however, the movie itself has some really great direction, some really great music, and, for me, by far the best Jurassic Park effects we've ever seen. And I still think it probably should have, uh, you know, squeezed out uh, Ready Player One in the Best Visual Effects Oscar nominees, but, whatever. And Gotti, uh... Yeah, it sucks. Gotti sucks. I saw it on Amazon Prime, uh, and I gotta say, it it is pretty bad. However, I don't think it's one of the worst because, I mean, really, there's nothing that horrible in it. I mean, there's a lot of bad in it. Uh, like, for example, the Pitbull music just does not fit the tone of the movie. It's, it's very generic and kind of bland. But I can at least find some good things in Gotti. Uh, and plus, after the shit I've seen this year, Gotti looks like a masterpiece compared to the top 10. So yeah, my bar has gotten really, really low when it comes to like what I think are the worst. As I always say, when the going gets tough, you always have some bleach. Let's get on to number 10. Before I go on, don't forget to SMASH that like button. SMASH that share button. And if you're new here, SMASH! Smash that subscribe button so you can watch more reviews like this one and give a little tap to the gray bell icon for notifications on my latest uploads. Back to the review. Coming in at number 10 is actually a movie that lots of people love and I never got it and that's Sorry to Bother You. Yeah, I know everyone loves Sorry to Bother You, but I personally found it to be just terrible. It had some nice performances, but I thought the script was pretentious as hell. It wasn't at all subtle with its execution. The white voices could have been way funnier than what we got. And the last act of the film has a very strong Get Out vibe to it. Not in an homage sense, but really more of a rip-off sense. You'll see what I mean if you see this movie. Coming at number 9 is Sherlock Gnomes. I don't know what else I can say about this movie. It's just stupid. What more can I say about a film called Sherlock Gnomes? There's not really much to say about this film. Next one. Coming at number 8 is Show Dogs. The only reason why this is not in my top 5 is because Will Arnett was actually giving a shit. He's not great, but he does a decent enough job with an incredibly stupid script and really lame direction by the much maligned Raja Gaznell. Who for some reason, even after the Scooby-Doo movies, Home Alone 3, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, and the two live-action Smurfs movies can somehow still find work in Hollywood. Just don't. Just don't watch this one. Coming at number 7, I never thought it would be this low on the list. But in any case, it's Fifty Shades Freed. This may be the best film in the franchise, but that's still not saying much because in terms of filmmaking, Freed gets nothing right. The screenplay is still just as bland and unrealistic about romance just as ever, and really, it's just tired at this point. Again, sort of like Sherlock Gnomes, like, what more can I say about a film like this? What more can we say about the Fifty Shades franchise that hasn't already been said? The relationships are completely unrealistic. Everything is just so bland and dumb. There's just nothing to say anymore. If you've seen the other two films, you've seen this one. Pureflix is known for making a lot of garbage religious films over the years. And when I heard that God's Not Dead 3 was coming out, I was for sure that was going to be in like my top 10. I mean, those movies were just were just so bad. 
And then I saw God's Not Dead 3, and for some reason it actually retconned the uh, the horrible lessons of the previous two movies, and actually decided to give the characters character development. Which is why it's relieving to say that before God's Not Dead 3 came out, we had a really terrible Pure Flix film called Samson, which might actually be Pure Flix's worst film to date. What could have been a powerful biblical epic instead boasts even worse production value than The Legend of Hercules, yeah, that Hercules movie, and manages to render the main hero unlikable when he sets fire to a bunch of foxes that didn't even do anything to provoke him. So yeah, if you want to see more detail on this, go watch my review, or check out my letterbox. But yeah, Samson, just don't watch it. It's pure garbage. It's pure flicks garbage. Coming in at number 5 is The Hurricane Heist, which might actually take the cake as the most boring movie of the year. The Hurricane Heist has terrible visual effects. Which, for a disaster movie to work, you would probably want your effects to look really big and realistic so that we can feel the danger, but instead, if you have bad visual effects, then I feel no tension whatsoever, and so for about nearly two hours, I'm just sitting in my chair, just for the love of God, begging the movie to end. There, this is probably one of the worst action films I've ever seen in my life, and definitely one of the most boring. After watching The Hurricane Heist, I was convinced I had watched the worst movie of the year. But the rest of the films from here on out, I didn't even know were coming out until like maybe a week or two in advance before watching them. And one thing that I was especially not expecting uh, to happen this year was for Dinesh D'Souza to show his stupid face again with his next propaganda piece called Death of a Nation. Just like his previous film, Hillary's America, Death of a Nation doesn't want to criticize uh, the Democrats in a respectful manner that would actually be engaging to watch, but rather it takes the extreme route and just straight up calls Democrats Nazis. The things he brings up, once again, are either lies or things that are taken completely out of context just so that they can fit his narrative, which is not what a documentary should be. You can, like, you can criticize the Democrats. Like, there are plenty of things you can criticize the Democrats on. But when you tackle it like this in an attack mode and changing facts to fit your narrative, it's not good. It's not gonna work. In all honesty, I think this is even worse than Hillary's America. Because funny enough, this actually has a lot of leftover footage from Hillary's America. So basically, I was sitting there watching a grade B version of Hillary's America, still trying to get the, across the exact same point using some of the same footage, some of the footage that wasn't used in Hillary's America, but you can obviously tell it was filmed during that uh, filming period of Hillary's America. This is basically just Hillary's America all over again, just with a new name on it. Just, good God, there, and yet there's still three more movies that are worse. Coming at number three is The Trump Prophecy. Well, we've seen the extremist Christian films, and we've seen the extremist uh, far-right films, so why not combine the two, right? That sounds like a great idea. Well, that's when you get the Trump prophecy, the supposed true story of a retired firefighter who in 2011 heard the voice of God tell him that Donald Trump was going to be the next president of the United States and he was going to make America great again. Hmm. Coming at number two is a film you've probably never heard of called Camp Death 3 in 2D. Even though from what I've heard, this is not the third installment of a franchise. Like there's no one and two, it's just called Camp Death 3. Because of course it is. And funny enough, I actually received my very first screener for uh, Camp Death 3. And while I can definitely say the director, Matt Frame, is a very nice guy, and he does seem to be very committed to spreading the word about his movie, which, hey, you gotta get your buzz going around, that's fine. However, Camp Death 3 is a complete and utter disaster on every level. The production quality is awful, especially with its effects. It's nasty, it's eye-roll worthy, 
And the only reason why I even bothered with this film was because I guess Matt Frame actually did manage to release this in some theaters. How he did this, I don't know, but you might as well just have, you know, my name on the poster with, you know, one of those critic quotes or whatever, where it says, This film may know it's stupid, but it's still not funny. Still, it was nice getting my first screener. And my number one worst film of the year, the, like, good god, we've already seen movies that bored me, movies that offended me, movies that annoyed me, all that pales in comparison to the absolutely, not even amateur filmmaking, just horrible filmmaking of 12 Pole. Again, I've met the director of this film, Sam Hodge. He's a swell dude. He's a really cool guy. And it seems like he, as well as Matt Frame, seem to be actual adults when it comes to criticism, unlike some filmmakers. But my god, even I wasn't anticipating how bad 12 Pole would be. Holy shit. This was actually filmed in my home state of West Virginia and was shown in West Virginia theaters. It even made the news when it premiered in Huntington. However, I'd have to wait a couple of months to see it because the Thursday of its premiere was also the Thursday of the premiere of Avengers Infinity War. And walking out of Infinity War and walking out of 12 Pole, I can say I definitely made the right choice. The camera work for 12 Pole, hell, even the camera itself for 12 Pole was really shitty. The sound editing and sound mixing was some of the worst I've ever heard in my life. It was not scary, it was horribly directed, and really there's nothing about this film that belonged in a movie theater. Again, I want to reiterate this, Sam Hodge is a really cool dude, he's a, he's a nice guy, I have no complaints with him as a person, but this might actually be one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life, and that's saying something because I saw lots of shitty movies during my life. So, that's my list of my top 10 worst movies of 2018. If I do a best movies of 2018 list, it's probably not going to be a top 10. It's just going to be like a, an alphabetical order uh, ranking of some of my favorite films of 2018. Because there were just so many great movies and I don't feel like I could rank them in a video. If you want to check out my, uh, my letterbox, then you can easily find out. Uh, what my top 10 are are in order and keep in mind the list is always changing I'm always going back to letterbox and changing my list so no list is the same forever usually I think probably yeah so yeah what are your worst movies of 2018 I'm pretty sure you saw none of these movies uh, good for you then in any case, let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like. Share the video so we can get the channel circulated. Don't forget to support my Patreon on my Patreon page. Or if you can't do that, then consider supporting me through my PayPal and my PayPal donation button in the description below. Again, check out my Letterboxd account. And if you want to see more, click this.